All right, YouTube world, I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, do a bird box here. And then uh, I'm also gonna show you guys how to do this gable. And uh, that'll probably be, probably be it for this video. Um, I've already got a couple videos on how to cut soffit and how to be real efficient. And you can cut a whole house in no time uh, using that chop saw like I do, the little miter, miter box. Um, but anyway, they ran their old uh, F channel down here and then also down here into the corner post. Right, so they actually had soffit in here, like that, um, rather than wrapping it like a bird box. But that's what we're gonna do in this video. The only thing that we have to work around is the fact that they have this half inch here where their soffit ran in, and we're not gonna have that. We're only gonna have this small piece of fascia. So you can see what the issue is gonna be if we were to put that there, right? That's, that doesn't look very good. So uh, we're actually cutting some plywood right now, and we're gonna run a piece of plywood back here, and that's gonna fill this up. And that should leave just enough space for us for this to go in there. And then what I'm going to do is I cut this piece here. Uh, all I do is score this for my first piece. Okay, you just score it and break it off. And what this does is this is going to keep your end from flapping in the wind and everything. It's going to. It's also going to hold tight down to the soffit, and it will always stay that way, right? Because if I just put this in here and then put fascia on it, it wouldn't hold and it wouldn't look right. So when this goes up like this. That fascia is gonna hook right to it and it's gonna sit down flush in that fascia forever. All right, so I got my plywood in, got my piece on, got it nice and square. We're all set, I'm ready to do my bird box and then uh, we can get some F channel rolling. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna film him throwing, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Like that. Dude, or if he's in the National Guard like me, we had to throw waters. That was a good toss. Was so good. I, it, it, Dude, that's all we were doing is throwing waters to the real soldiers. <laughs> I'm just playing. Yeah. Isn't that what you guys used to say when I was younger? Uh, who was it that used to tell me that? You went to war and all you did was pass out waters. Oh my God. <laughs> I was ready to kill him. All right, so to recap real quick, we patted out our plywood. All right, we're ready to do our bird box. Got our soffit on. Um, but here's how you have to... You have to keep all this in mind when you're doing your bird boxes and all your face show, okay? So the way that this needs to go, is it needs to go bird box, then this needs to come here and wrap around, then this fascia needs to come down and go flush. So, you know, I get this question asked all the time when we're on the job. You know, even my guys who know better, they just still ask that question. They go, is it the bird box first? Uh, do we got to do the fascia first or the uh, gable before we do the bottom fascia? Comes up all the time, okay? So it's bird box, horizontal, angle okay it's not a good way to remember it or anything but fuck you got the you get the gist so what we're doing here we're gonna put this up nice and flush i'm gonna trace it okay. now what i'm gonna do is take my knife and a square it's pretty close to square okay we're gonna go ahead and give this a little score-a-rama. Just a few times on the same spot. Give it one little slicer. Boom. Okay. And now, let's see which one's trying to bend. Looks like this one's gonna go. So, I can 45 this. Sometimes I cheat it over just a smidgen. You'll always be good. At least to make your line, you can always cut straight with that line, whichever way you want. If you want to add or subtract a little, I'm going to take off a little more than it was. the line was. Okay, make sure that goes all the way through. Boom. So now you got that. Crisp. It's pretty crispy, ain't it? Mm. All right, so you just slide it back on in. Get it all the way nice and flush, up to where it needs to be, exactly where you want this. Make sure everything's tight. And you come over here, and this one needs to be flush, okay? So, now we take out the presidentials. You don't want it long, and you don't want it really short. 
it's okay to be a little short, but if you're short all the way down here at your bottom, then that's gonna show. So I always go just a touch in on that line, okay? Just because, again, you don't want it out, but you also don't want it very far in. You're leaving the line. I don't know what's going on, but... Oh, there it goes. I was like, damn. I was like, I was short. <laughs> But anyway, that's how that goes. This fascia can come in and you can just 45, 45 the next fascia when it comes across the front. So you can leave this one full and then you can go ahead and add trim nails. And I'd, I only have the whites on me, but that's okay. I'll just, I just need to get a tack in this. So I'll put it somewhere that it's covered. I haven't loaded up yet on the others. But anyway, that fascia is coming down here. So that's, that one's hidden, but now it's in place, okay? This part kind of sucks because, you know, we got to run our F channel in here. I'm actually going to be running my F channel upside down. Reason being, because look at this. <laughs> if I run it flush anywhere in here, there's going to be a line showing because of their siding. All right, so um, that V notch is not from nothing. But uh, I just got this. Usually I like to use soffit J for this because it fits right at that angle like this and you can just shoot it in there um these don't always sit perfectly flush if you've got like a steeper roof like an 812 it really is kind of a pain to try to get this to look right but uh it should look fine on this 412 so basically I'm just gonna give this a send in there hit that a few times and then i can probably shoot right back through here right through that plywood i put up okay now that looks nice and good there, and it should be easy to get our first piece of soffit in. But take a step back. One thing we have to do is we have to measure this to see to see uh, how this is going to fall. Okay, because you don't want to screw yourself. So this is uh, let's see, fourteen. What you got? It. It's kind of loose. Fine, 14 foot nine. Okay, 14 foot nine, which means, which means my piece when it gets all the way up there, because these are all 12 inches, is going to land roughly somewhere in this little area, somewhere right through here. That's good because you just don't want this part. You just don't want this to land like this. There ain't nothing worse than when you get a piece and it lands like this. Okay then this never tucks in right. You have issues. It's okay if it's maybe like there, but like if it lands like this too, that sucks. So mm. you've got, you know, about yeah. two inches of a uh, landing that can screw you. And you'd be surprised at how common that happens. Yeah, so Brad already uh, got started, for started his little trick on here. Just took the flange off, which was all right in that instance, but <clears throat> It needed to be measured, like you said, to make sure the fall wasn't an yeah. odd spot. Which is genius. <laughs> you say genius? Uh, I overdid it. I had a little bit too much extra, but whatever. You can edit that shit out. <laughs> or leave it. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Whatever's, whatever the video needs. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, there she goes. Mm, a little bite. She's biting this morning. <laughs> oh, that looks nice too. Well, how's it looking? Square also. Right, this part to come out just a touch. Now, do you prefer to adjust your first piece and then head on square from there, yeah, or adjust I, I, as you go? I get this first piece as good as I can. Definitely. Mm. Sometimes it's good to check it both ways. Yeah, it's still okay. It's come out just a smidgen. Okay. I can't get that. Now that's perfect. Okay. You get that first piece perfect. Mm. Yeah. Usually I I'm do gonna... it on the first two pieces because the first piece don't always go 100% perfect. Okay. But uh, one way to always make sure that your pieces are going to be good is after you lock it in, just always give that a shove right there on this first rib back towards the lock.
you check it every once in a while for square. Yeah. It's it's still just about perfect. I usually don't, you know, I usually square it right in the beginning, make sure you're running square, and then I don't do it again for about another 10 or 15 feet, depending on the size of your run. Once we get to the top of that gable, you're going to break it down for us on how you bend your piece or how you're going to yeah. go ahead and do that exactly. Oh, come on. Go ahead and get this square now. Yeah. Looks like this part needs to come out a little. So what? When you got to when you got to do your little cheat in here, you want to do it very minimal, okay? Gradually come yeah, to that very point. Very minimal, and usually, depending on how severe it is, mine's not very severe at all. You get it out of one or two pieces, or uh, two or three pieces. I think I'm gonna do mine out of two. So I'm gonna go ahead and staple that. And every time I ever do a cheat, what you're now doing is, you're pulling this tongue out of the groove a touch. Mine is less than an eighth, so it's not that big of a deal. Got plenty in there, but I always give that a staple. That will always prevent that from coming out. Anytime you do any cheat. And when you check it every couple feet, like I said, as long as you take the time to start square, it's gonna save you a lot of time. Um, it's gonna save you a lot of time from uh, taking out your speed square way too often, you know? Every piece sometimes. Yeah, every yeah. other piece or whatever. There's no need for that. As long as you start off pretty square, you're not gonna have a lot of trouble with your pieces being square. To tell you the truth, the more often you check it, The more often you check it, the more screwed up it's gonna be. You're gonna spend way too much time trying to fix something that's not broken. All right, so I got this set in here. I cut it a little long and I just went up in here and I marked that right on that peak there. Okay, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that. All right, I'm gonna get right on in there. Cut that sucker. That probably looks so dangerous on camera. <laughs> hey, watch that language while I'm making YouTube videos. Yeah, demonetize her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't demonetize that freaking this video. On... <laughs> God, <laughs> it wasn't on there long enough. <laughs> yeah, no. He he thinks that they took it down and I took it down. I took it down because I planned on taking it down, and also. Uh, apparently BDR didn't make that post about me, so I kind of felt bad, you know, there was no reason to attack that guy like I did. BDR's not right. Yeah, at least on some roofs. Okay. So that's how that goes. I'll probably have to come in about like that. And then I'll just give this a bend in. So I basically just need to go like that. And then I have to get this to bend in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run right up that too. Boom. Okay. And now this has a hem on the inside of it. Well, it's completely hemmed, I guess. See that back there? So I need to at least give that ending just a nick. Okay. And now this will bend. Boom. Oh, I, I need to cut off. I forgot I gotta cut off this top too. There's no need for that top. Yeah, I'm gonna take this off a little. So, might let me go in there. It's still covered. All right, so we got that up in there. That's all done. So I'll hold that nice and down. You could trim this off if you wanted. You could put it flush. You would just have to cut that angle that I did in there. Really no big deal, just a preference. By the way, if you guys didn't notice, there's no connection to the attic here, okay? So therefore nothing really needs vented and that's why you'll always see solid up gables and vented on um, the eaves. Okay. 
Anyhow, I'm just gonna drop this in here. And you see the way that I did, did my F channel, I can get this all the way up in. All right, and I can just give this a mark right here at the bend and then force this up and get a mark there too. Okay, now I'll, trans I'll transfer my marks onto the back. So, mark close to the edge. Okay, so I'm scoring this twice. Maybe even just a one more little one. Okay. Reason why it's close to this rib, and I want this to take to that bend. So I put my fingers there to get it to go on that bend. All right, now you don't need a whole lot. See how it's got that little flex in it now? You got to be careful because as soon as you do this your piece almost is always off square now so as soon as you come back down on this next one oh, I just put that in backwards <laughs> so as soon as you come down off this next one your piece is almost always out of square so you also have to re-square it yeah see that's way off okay Remember, don't do too much adjusting in one piece. Every time you adjust, make sure you hit that nail there. Now I'm gonna soft it. I'm gonna finish softening this for you guys, and then I'm gonna show you the real point of this video, which is not only to show you guys the gable, not only to show you how to do a bird box, but how to make this connection so that you never forget it. All right, so when it comes to fascia, the first and most important thing is your point of view, okay? Where are we going to be viewing this from? The driveway is the answer, right? Nine times out of ten, it's usually the driveway, right? So, if we put on a piece of fascia here, and then another piece of fascia over it, you're going to be able to see that seam, right? So that's ugly. I'm going to go ahead and do that, but leave the end unnailed, just, for, just because I picked this side to start with, and I want to show you guys this. Um, but... A good general rule is, if you don't want to see the seams from the direction that you're standing, so let's picture we're standing in the driveway, we don't want to see the seams, as long as you start at the far end, you're, then your piece will go on and this piece will cover, the next piece will cover, so as long as you start from the far end, it'll always work out good. Next most important thing, you don't want to land with a shorty, okay? When it comes to fascia, you don't really want a piece less than probably two foot. So I measured this whole side, it's 44 foot, these are 12 foot pieces, so I'm going to end up using four pieces that are that add up to 48, which means I'll have a four foot finisher and that works out just fine. So let me show you what we're going to do here. I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to use, I'm going to use my squeeze, my speed square for this. Okay. We're going to do exactly a one inch wrap around. Okay. And I also want to use my speed square for this so that my cuts nice and clean. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a slice, a nice straight one. All right, then we're gonna turn this over. We're gonna we're gonna have to cut right here a little bit for the bend, and some people have cut that too. It's not not really important, okay? And then, as you guys probably know by now, after my chimney video and this, I like to give my pieces a little score just to help them bend proper. Okay. And then I've also got these hand benders which I can use now. Okay, and we're just gonna go ahead and give this a good bend. Okay. Now we should have a good mark on our front, a nice straight one. You see that looks pretty good. 
Okay. So now all we have to do is just make sure we go up underneath this drip edge. Go up underneath all the drip edge. Let me take a look at the end, make sure it's nice and square. And don't forget, remember what I said earlier? My other piece comes in and we can 45 that. So we're gonna wanna do that, okay? But I'm just gonna go ahead and tack this on. All right, now where we nail, come in here. Where we nail is right in between the grooves of the soffit. And you want a smooth head hammer because it's not gonna take as much of that paint off. And it's also a lot less likely to ding this metal because you, and you know if you give it that one extra, a lot of times it'll make a little dimple right here in the face. Okay, so you don't want that. When you install this, you want to put these trim nails every couple feet and you want to push in and up. All right. And again, like I said, I'm going to leave this end unnailed. All right. I'm going to come over here. Now this can be a little loose. And I'm going to trim off that mark. Boom. So we got a nice 45 on there. And then we can go ahead and give this just one nail. I'm actually going to let that sit a little more level. Okay. Also, one thing, this is a two by six fascia. And I, I look down it, it's pretty straight, so we shouldn't have any oil cans. You know, where like a part's low and you push it up and the metal makes a little bubble in it. We call that an oil can. <laughs> if you're putting fascia up on one by fascia, you're almost always gonna get that. So what I'll do is I'll string a line from end to end. If it sags, sometimes if it's as long as it's not severe, I'll snap a line on it and cut that off flat so that we have a nice level line going across. A nice straight line, I should say. Um, and if we string the line and it's up higher than the line, then we'll cut one bys and add it to the bottom of that. Okay. So now we've got this one settled. Watch your foot there. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this piece of fascia rolling. But what I always do first is I'll go ahead and I'll measure this. Right. So we've got about 18 inches. Uh, that's pretty exact. Meaning it's going to give me <laughs> not much overhang. So I'll just do like 18 and a quarter. Okay, and I'll just mark that towards the bottom. All right, I'll just mark it right down here too so I know. Because I like to knife these off before I cut them. If I cut that snip, then it's going to be a little flimsier and you won't get quite as good as a cut. And you want to cut this right in that groove, nice and straight. Okay, I'm gonna give it one extra score so this breaks off a little easier. This is some pretty heavy duty metal. Usually bend it in first, and then when you open the mouth of it, it'll come off a little better. going to go ahead and make sure I've got no nails or anything sticking up because like even something as minor as this right here get a close-up on that some of these some of those can make marks in your aluminum okay looks like it's about it now I'm gonna go ahead and Put this in here. All right. Make sure it's up there pretty good. Not bad. And we're going to go ahead and trace that. Okay. And we also got to trace this bottom. Don't forget about that. All right. <clears throat> yeah. 
I'll pull this down. We're gonna snip this. Let me get them presidentials. All right. He's my guy with the long straight. Okay, now we're gonna slide this. We gotta come out a little, right? Yep. Probably right there. Let me double check it. Get it from this end. Maybe up a little. Okay, now some people will 45 this. Come look under here, Brad. You could 45 that if you want. I don't think that one would look right with a 45, so I'm not going to. But we're gonna go ahead and give this a tack. Don't get too close up on my metal work. There's almost always something that can get picked apart on metal. <laughs> okay. Now I'm just gonna give this a go. Just to recap again, what we want to do is we want to get our bird box on nice and solid. There's nails on this side, there's nails on this side. I usually don't really try to put nails in here or this, especially this edge, because it, it can buckle. Once in a while you can get in here, especially if needed, but uh, mine's sitting pretty good, okay? So we want to do the bird box first. Then we want to do our horizontal, our E fascia, and wrap that around. And we want our gable fascia to come right down and flush with this edge and flush with that bottom, okay? So, <clears throat> that's how it's done. If you guys have any questions, uh, leave it in the comments. And uh, thanks for everybody for watching and making these videos possible. Don't forget to, sub sub <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already.